uh, one of the major projects uh, that we had was upgrading close to uh, 200 sites for Portland State University from their Drupal 6 system into their Drupal 7 system. And we did that all in, uh, in one go. It wasn't one day, but it was one go, so to speak. And that's a little bit information about what ImageX Media is doing and some of our clients. So um, I'm going to stop with the shameless plugging right here. Should you upgrade to Drupal 7? Well, I think like the, the answer is, is relatively obvious, but uh, uh, for a lot of people, that uh, topic is one that, that causes some uh, nightmares and, and some headaches. Um, if you were, um, probably the reason why you're sitting in this room today is that you're an administrator, maybe in an organization that has a Drupal 6 uh, installation, a Drupal 6 site. Um, you're maybe a, the site owner yourself and your current system is in Drupal 6 and you're thinking about like um, going over to uh, um, upgrading to Drupal 7. Um, maybe you're a shop owner or a freelancer and uh, in recent times now the requests have become more and more uh, from clients to, hey, can you upgrade my site from uh, 6 to 7? So we want to talk about a couple of things and make the headaches go away a little bit or make you aware of uh, when the right time is to take a Tylenol, so to speak. Um, so these are a couple of the things that we're going to talk about. Um, should you upgrade to Drupal 7? And the answer is, is a resounding yes, but there's a little asterisk beside it because that's a pretty definitive statement. So we're going to um, briefly touch on uh, some areas also where it might not be uh, the best way to upgrade your site to, from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7. Uh, if you studied your little um, program carefully, you saw that there are a lot of sessions this year about actually migrating your site. Not going the usual upgrade way, but migrating content. Uh, and not only from a third part, from a different system like WordPress, uh, that also is a, is a valid way of going from a Drupal 6 site to a Drupal 7 site. But in this session, we want to concentrate a little bit more of like the traditional way, the upgrading path, the upgrade path that is, that is there. Um, we're going to briefly talk about some of the benefits that, uh, that you will gain from, from going to Drupal 7, um, show you a little bit what the status is regarding um, core and also contributed modules. Uh, we're going to talk about actually how to upgrade, what the steps are um, there regarding core, contrib, uh, your custom modules, uh, your theme, uh, what is going to happen to your content, CCK fields. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about catastrophes that you might uh, run across or that, that we experienced. And contrary to um, every recommendation from uh, the Drupal Association that said, don't do live demos, we're going to do a live demo. And um, Shay is uh, very sure that his uh, script that he has written will work. Yeah. I'm not so sure about that. So uh, if you're getting bored, uh, tweet to hashtag HU7up, fail or win, and bet if we actually manage to get this live demo working at the end of the session or not. And you might get a lollipop if you do. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the new things in, uh, in Drupal 7. And uh, from a, that is a little bit more from a programmer's perspective. Um, I chose these cars because, let's be honest, like the, the old Mustang, that, that's a classic. That's still a pretty good car. And I feel the same way about Drupal 6. Um, it's a, still a pretty good system. And it's one of the systems that really uh, made Drupal uh, take off more than uh, anything before. But um, there's just... Uh, a lot of nice new bling and a nice new things in Drupal 7 that makes you considering switching over there. Uh, in core now we have uh, the concept of entities, we have an improved form API that has a lot of cool features that programmers can use. We have a new database abstraction layer that makes it much easier to integrate with uh, other databases other than MySQL. And on the contrib level, we also have a lot of exciting new developments and modules coming out. Some of these have backports to Drupal 6 or a Drupal 6 version, but they're not as like uh, fully featured as in, as in Drupal 7, like the media module, display suite, or um, theming-related Omega or uh, Delta. Um, and some of the, the other benefits and features that came in in 7 uh, with new functionality is like now you can cancel accounts. We have a new base theme and admin theme. Uh, accessibility has become better. Um, usability, and I know some of you might grinch when I'm, when I'm saying these keywords, but we have now a dashboard and an overlay in core. 
Um, we have contextual links um, right in there. We have in, in, like improvements when it comes to security. Uh, you cannot, um, you need like now the hash salt in order to trigger cron runs. Uh, we have uh, methods against brute force attacks. And of course, mobile, um, as, as you heard in Dries' keynote, uh, will be even a more integral part in Drupal 8, but Drupal 7 is already um, on, a, on a good way to make it much easier to have a mobile-friendly site and, and mobile applications that you can uh, develop. And in order to bring like a really lame Drupal joke in, web chicks will dig you if you go with Drupal 7. I'm just gonna be very happy if you use that. So these are some of the benefits that you will gain by going to Drupal 7, but now the question is, um, is Drupal 7 ready for you, for the website in your organization or for the client that is coming to you and wants an upgrade? And Shay is gonna talk a little bit about that. All right, well, get back to the point that we had earlier. Is Drupal 7 ready for you? I'm gonna give you a resounding yes. Yes, it is. Uh, as far as it goes right now, the core is stable, uh, but it's more than stable. Uh, if you noticed uh, Dries' key point yesterday, the Drupal 7 uh, development life cycle is now in the mature stage. Uh, so that means it's, there's not going to be any radical changes, uh, bugs and, and, and kind of problems in that um, have been, you know, kind of they're out of the way, so you shouldn't be running into anything core related that will prevent you from upgrading from six to seven. Um, and from that as well, one of the reasons why uh, we're seeing this uh, upgrade a little bit later, um, core has been stable for about a year and a half now. Um, and we haven't said that, okay, well, maybe you shouldn't you know, wait a little bit. Um, because a lot of the, the things that make up Drupal and, and make it the, what it is, is the contributed modules. And a lot of those weren't ready yet um, when Drupal 7 came out. Um, so right now there is 3,200 contributed modules that are now Drupal 7 versions uh, and that are stable. Uh, and the majority of these ones are, the, are the, the core ones that you use on your websites in the day to day. Uh, things like uh, context, views, uh, panels, um, and stuff like that. So they're, they're ready. Um, and that means that Drupal 7 sites are ready for you as well. Um, as far as Drupal 8 goes, you might be wondering, hey, should I, you know, should I wait? You know, Dries is telling me, like, uh, hey, uh, there's a functionality freeze uh, in December, and then there's going to be code freeze in February, um, and then August 8th, hey, we're going to have a live video. Why don't I just wait until next year? Uh, again, like, when I was talking about Drupal 7, it's about a year and a half later now that we're saying, hey, okay, now it's time to upgrade. Uh, although Core is stable, um, a lot of the other contributed modules have to catch up as well. Um, and just another point as well, um, on just not to, you know, this is a, the open source community. Uh, when these deadlines are set, uh, just be aware um, that a lot of the times delays happen. Uh, you guys are part of the software industry. I'm sure that you guys have had pushbacks and, and things get delayed. So uh, I, would, uh, I would anticipate that as well. Uh, one great notice would be, um, I, I've got a tweet here from Angie. Um, and this, uh, this was on February 21st of this year. And she marked that uh, this week was the first week that Drupal 7 usage overtook Drupal 6 stats. Uh, I just want to show you the, the trend that's coming up here. Um, this is the weekly project usage breakdown uh, on D.org. Uh, on March 11th, there was 342,000 websites in Drupal 7 and only 314,000 in Drupal 6. So there's 314,000 sites that work in Drupal 7. Uh, there's another reason for you to upgrade as well. Um, the, uh, as you can see through the time here, like, Drupal 7's popularity is growing uh, quite quickly, so the velocity of the change is, is, is huge. Uh, to get back on the point of the contributed modules, uh, this is a screenshot of uh, drupalcontrib.org. This was put together by Angie Byron. Um, it's got a listing of the status of the top 60 po most popular Drupal modules uh, in Drupal 6, uh, done by usage. Uh, and 46 of the top 60 uh, are uh, at a stable state. Um, some of them are in beta 1, beta 2, like C tools, uh, but they are stable and, and, and usable. So I'd check out that, uh, that site. Um, along with the ones that you use that are stable and are usable, uh, there are a few problem modules. Um, for those of you that uh, have uh, modules like organic groups, um, right now in Drupal 6 there's 115 different individual modules that add functionality uh, to organic groups. Uh, there's 21 in Drupal 7. Um, so this is part of the, the whole thing we're going to try to explain to you today is you got to do a bit of research on whether or not um, some of the stuff that you use has an upgrade path uh, and is ready in Drupal 7. Uh, so these, some of the, these ones are the common ones. Um, Ubercart. Um, Commas changes a whole bunch in Drupal 7. I would actually highly recommend using Drupal 7 uh, if you're going to use uh, anything commerce related. Uh, the Drupal, uh, uh, the commerce guys actually just acquired, I think it was about $5 million in funding 
uh, to progress the uh, Drupal 7 e-commerce. So if you guys are into that, um, I would definitely be focused on, on moving up to Drupal 7. Uh, if you're using Ubercard right now, um, I know there's a lot of development happening for that, um, but you might not be ready. Uh, other things to, to, to make note is a lot of the, uh, the SEO tools that are in, uh, in Drupal 7 aren't as strong as in Drupal 6. Drupal 7 actually itself uh, is a lot more SEO friendly uh, with the uh, adoption of a lot of themes that are in HTML5, uh, but the tools that you provide your, HTML, or your SEO gurus uh, aren't quite there yet. So we have things like NodeWords, which have an upgrade path to uh, a new module called uh, meta tags or meta tags quick. Um, so the, the, the tools that you're used to and that you spend all the money and give to your SEO gurus um, might not be there in Drupal, or Drupal 7. So uh, be aware. You can still do everything in 7, um, but again, it's just a couple of the modules might not be available there for you. Uh, and just a couple other ones to note, uh, path redirect, uh, content profile. So uh, on top of this, these are just a couple of handful. Uh, again, you'll have to do a little bit of research when it comes to your own personal site. If you are using the module, go to the page, check it out. Uh, there's an issue queue uh, that have a, um, usually have an upgrade path status or an issue status so you can kind of see and, and understand uh, whether or not what I have on my site has a path to seven. So now a little bit less of the why and more of the how, whoever tweeted that out here. Um, how to upgrade core and contrib. Let's say you have done your research, um, as uh, Shay just mentioned, and uh, your site is a, is a relatively straightforward and, and standard site regarding Drupal 6 and uh, the modules that, you, that you're using on it. Um, now, if you look at these steps and, and you have already done a little bit of, of your, your research, you say like, well, okay, these steps, uh, um, they seem to be the same steps that are mentioned on the Drupal.org uh, documentation, and, and that's true. This is repetition for emphasis. These steps are really important to follow along. Um, the first step, as, as stupid as it sounds, is like back up everything. If, if you don't have your code yet in, in Git or any uh, version control system, uh, shame on you. Um, it's really important that you have a quick fallback when you're starting to work on the upgrade uh, in case anything uh, goes south or you need to, you need to um, go quickly back to the last point um, where, you, where you started off. Uh, the next point that you need to do is you need to upgrade everything to the latest and greatest within Drupal 6. Um, you really have to do that in order to make the transition uh, as quick and as painless as possible. Third step is to disable all non-core modules. Um, sometimes, maybe if you didn't uh, did transitions from five to six, uh, it also worked if you didn't do that. Um, but we found, like in, in the projects that we worked with, that uh, actually this really helped in order to have a clean transition. Then. If you're using Git, this should be that can be really a simple step: is to switching out core and contrib files. If you maybe have a different uh, branch where you already put the new files in, um, run update PHP, enable all the modules again that you need, run update PHP again, and in a perfect world, you will have a new site. There are tools that can help you to achieve that much quicker than uh, and much simpler um, than doing all of this by hand and. Of course, that's where, where Drush comes in, uh, and, and hopefully uh, all of you or most of you are, are using Drush. Um, the two commands that I want to highlight here is, is UPC, or um, which is for, uh, short for update code, um, which um, if you just use the command like this, is looking at your whole Drupal installation and is looking for the core as well as for any contributed modules that have an update available, and then will run that uh, update. You have to follow that up though with a, uh, with a database update. And there's even, a, uh, there's even a Drush command that promises you to do the whole steps one to seven uh, for you, which is a Drush site upgrade or sub. That works if you have a very straightforward site again. Uh, it doesn't work in all cases. So um, be careful with that, uh, but you definitely can try that out and that can actually help you quite a lot. And some of these steps, uh, Shay will uh, later on run the demonstration. So just a quick uh, reminder. Um, I think so far we only have fails, um, but um, that's okay. So what about um, your custom module? If you, if you have created your custom module, 
Is it looking really bad? No, or good. Yeah, okay. Um, if you have a custom module uh, that you want to upgrade, and a lot of sites have at least a, a little helper module where you needed to put in any like, kind of like minor changes, maybe like form tweaks or things like that. Um, one thing you can do, you, again, the Drupal, the, the, the documentation on uh, d.org is really good for this. But I want to give you a, a quick uh, show of a module, um, the coder module and the coder upgrade module, and how these modules can really um, help you with your site upgrades. So um, let me quickly go. Is that, yeah, OK, it's, it's kind of like, this is a clean Drupal 7 install here. Um, and uh, if you want to see again which module it is that I'm talking about, it's called Coder, and in that package is also Coder Review and Coder Upgrade. So, and, and I dug out like two really old, um, from ancient old Drupal 6 projects, uh, two modules um, to, to look at it. Um, so one was a custom, uh, tie into CCK and now in the in a in a module page you see a link for code review and when I'm when I'm clicking on it the first thing that it it does it complains about what crappy code I wrote there and that I didn't indented it and spaces were missing and all of this but that's actually not what I'm interested in in the uh, review section um, I can say I want to convert this module from 6 to 7 and also want you to tell me about the coding standards and things like that uh, but just for this demonstration, I say, just show me the critical things that I really need to do um, that need to be, definitely need to be done in order to get this module from six to seven. And now it gives me uh, a number of things already. For example, um, hook permissions is the, the new name of that hook instead of hook perm. Um, things that I need to change in my info file. Uh, a couple of other functions that don't exist anymore. A uh, nice thing is it gives me already the replacement functions for it as well as a direct link to the Drupal doc site where I can read more about these changes and uh, what needs to be done there. Uh, and it also went into the JavaScript file and, and told me like the way you have structured that JavaScript file is not gonna work uh, in, uh, in six anymore. Now, there's also the upgrade uh, feature here. And um, the upgrade feature has two sections that you can run. The first one is that it says like, okay, I'm gonna help you with um, getting your coding standards in, in line because um, that might be all over the place and it makes it easier to migrate a module over. And then the second one is actually to apply the, the core API changes to it. Um, and just quickly to show you, uh, da, 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 da. so here's a module that I really, uh, yeah, you can read that. Um, uglified, I took spaces out and indenting out and all sorts of things. So that was uh, Drupal, seven, Drupal 6, uh, a helper module. Now for the coder upgrade, um, it has a directory called coder upgrade old in the files directory. So this is where you plug in your old module. And now I say, okay, I want you to try to upgrade this module and I want you to I want you to look for the coding standards and also the core API changes. Hello. This one here. And this one here. Okay, so this has now worked and I can uh, show you the changes that happened. Now, in, in a new directory called new, it placed that module again and what you see is still like the old module, and this is the new module. So just to show you the changes, it actually indented everything, it made sure that it all conforms with uh, what we have in Drupal.org, but also um, you might know that a hook block has changed from just one big hook function into multiple, so it already did that to me, um, and split that up. And it left some to-do messages for me about things that I still need to look at in my module. So for example, uh, rename the blocks, the deltas to something more useful and not just zero or, or one. It also complains about that I uh, didn't have any um, documentation about what this function is doing. And if I'm looking at the install file, um, I'm actually seeing that um, it tells me, well, the DB query, that syntax has changed. So this is the new syntax that I have given you. This is your old one. Just make sure that this, is, this statement is still doing what you want to do. So a super helpful tool, 
Uh, does it work with like extremely complex modules that you, that you work with? Maybe not the coder upgrade right away, but definitely the code review will give you a good uh, first start in order to find the different functions that might be deprecated in your module and make it easier for you uh, to upgrade in this regard. Now, that's about the, the steps on how to use uh, or how to go about um, core and, excuse me, um, about core and uh, your custom modules, but then there's also the themes. So Shay's gonna talk a little bit about um, how we can, what you have to take into consideration regarding your theme. Okay, I'd like to thank you guys right away for the hashtags. I expected about two or three. Um, and to answer your questions, yeah, we got a couple of uh, a couple more demos and, and answers to your questions coming up. So, one of them right here is, what about my site's theme? Uh, unfortunately, your site's theme doesn't have a coder module. Um, your site theme is most likely custom because uh, you want to reflect your brand. Uh, so, chances are you have something homebrew that reflects your needs, has your own regions. Um, so, we'll talk about that in a sec. But uh, what's new in Drupal 7? Um, there's new PHP template functions in Drupal 7. Uh, so those of you that use uh, uh, pre-process and process functions heavily in your theme, uh, this will be a, a bit of work to, to migrate those across. Um, you're going to need a developer is, is what I'm going to get at for, for when you actually do your site themes upgrade. Um, but uh, there's new variables, uh, there's new content variable, uh, which is now a block and you can place it around your site's theme uh, and move it around. Uh, there's new template files. Uh, there's new, uh, a new HTML and a new region template file. Uh, they got rid of the box template file, so if you happen to use that, I don't know who here would or has, um, they got rid of that one. Um, so the things to be aware of. Uh, if you had overlaying and kind of wrapped around code in, in multiple regions, uh, different templates, uh, it could be a bit of work uh, in that regard. Um, so things to consider is your theme is usually custom. Uh, there's not too many of you that I'm sure that are here running uh, something uh, like, uh, let's say, uh, Minelli or uh, <laughs> or uh, I don't know Bartik or something. Well, that's for seven. But um, you're gonna have something that you've gone out and you've paid a developer for uh, that brings your 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 brand to life. Um, so the upgrade path for that chances are doesn't exist. Those of you that are running contributed themes, uh, you might be lucky. I'd go back and take a look and and see that if there is a, a Drupal seven version uh, and whether or not that actually that meets your needs still. Um, the demo I'm going to show you later actually has a, a Marinelli, uh, which does actually have an upgrade path, uh, which is quite nice. Um, within, your, within your theme, um, when you're considering about time and, and cost uh, to, to upgrade your theme, um, a lot of you, I'm sure, use views. Uh, and a lot of you, you have multiple template files and views. I've, I've gone through a couple of, of themes where I'm digging and finding them all over the sites and custom modules, uh, and they have hundreds for every row and field. Um, so as you're going through those, uh, not only with the uh, module upgrade, uh, with your theme upgrade as well. So keep that in mind, that you'll have to make changes to those. Um, but when you're upgrading to Drupal 7, uh, consider this a really good opportunity uh, to take a moment to refresh your design, to take a look at, at, your, at your look and feel, and, and maybe this is a good chance for you to come up with a new design. Um, you know, you might have just actually gone through a whole upgrade to your site's look and feel, and now you realize that, oh, there's cool stuff in 7, now it's time to go to 7. So you might have to upgrade, but this actually would be a really good opportunity to, to start again, to create a new fresh look uh, for your, your site. Um, and with that, you can then convert it to uh, HTML5. Uh, mobile is a very big, big thing right now, and it's a big consideration. Uh, so when you are going to uh, are going to upgrade to seven, uh, there's lots of great tools. There's lots of great frameworks. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the Omega framework, uh, I use that and I think it's great. Uh, but it'd be a good chance to switch over to an HTML5 based site and then to get into the mobile market. Um, well, okay. So now we got all my modules, uh, all my theme, my core is up to date. I got content and I've written a lot of content and I want to keep that content. Um, what do I do? Uh, well, you have two choices. Uh, ben mentioned earlier that there's uh, migration. A lot of times, if you've developed a new site, uh, you might want to just migrate the content over from the D6 into the new clean installation of D7. Uh, there's a, actually, I believe, a, uh, a session coming up with Morton uh, after this one. It'd be a good idea to go check that one out. Uh, but the upgrade path uh, core uh, should take along, uh, take along your content. What happens with uh, the site upgrade is if you build your content types with, uh, with CCK and with Core. Um, when you run the upgrade, 
that should take all your content along with you, uh, all your fields, all your data, um, but it's not 100%. There's a few contributed modules out there, like say date or even like image for that matter, uh, which is now a core which is big, um, that uh, they might not come around straight across. So what you'll have to do uh, after you actually upgrade um, is do a field migration. So I've got a demo coming up later that will show you uh, again when you do the core upgrade, what comes out and what doesn't. Uh, will you lose anything when you upgrade? Will you lose your content? If you don't back up, most likely. <laughs> so I highly, again, stress the fact is that the upgrade process is a bit of a buggy one. Um, with you have a lot of contributed and custom modules, so make sure you back up. But uh, will you lose things? No. Um, you're not going to lose any of your content. All that will get come forward. Uh, but something to keep in mind is that uh, if you have custom modules that define content types, or custom modules that define fields, you will have to upgrade those uh, with the coder first. Uh, the core upgrade won't do that for you. Uh, what about my images and other files within my content? Um, again, if you're using file field, that will upgrade through core, which is great. Uh, there's a new module, uh, media. Well, it's not new. There's a six version, but it's not the same as the seven version. Again, I highly recommend using that. Um, it's co compatible with the file field. So after you upgrade, you should be able to switch what's called the, uh, the widget type uh, on the field over to the media field and use the new robust features in the media module. Um, and then IMCE, a lot of you, uh, sorry, apologize. A lot of you probably use IMCE as your file browser. Um, again, this would be a good opportunity to, to move away from that uh, into the media module. Um, it'll actually allow you to import uh, your IMCE file directory structure directly into the media module. Um, so within the media file browser, you can see uh, a structured foldered layout of all your files and, and preview. It's, uh, it's quite slick, actually. Oop. Okay, I think that was one too much. There go. Okay, how to upgrade. Catastrophes. This, this is my personal slide um, for my rant. Uh, with the demo that I put together, I, I spent, I don't know how many hours of pulling my hair out. I'm lucky I have more than this guy. Um, what? <laughs> Uh, but it has issues, um, and some of the common issues that you might find um, are something like volume of content. Uh, we've had a number of sites that have hundreds of thousands of nodes, uh, and when you run scripts with hundreds of thousands of nodes, things time out, things break, uh, and things, you know, just your, there are limitations to your hardware. Uh, so you have to break it up into batches, uh, compress them, um, or, uh, which we say a lot of times, when you have such a volume of content, uh, is that actually the best option might be a migrate is to export out pieces of your, your site and import them in uh, one at a time. Uh, but while you're doing that, uh, upgrades can take a while. So while that's, uh, those large batches of, of content are being upgraded, uh, you're getting new content. You have a user contributor site, guys are blogging, guys are posting on the forums, guys are leaving comments. You don't want to lose any of that. Um, so how do you control that? Uh, well, solution, you have a development environment um, and you, have, uh, you automate the process as much as you can. Uh, if you come to uh, a shop or uh, a freelance developer, uh, if you have them to write scripts, something that they can constantly reuse, uh, which again, I'll again highlight the importance of, of having a backup and writing scripts because as you do the process, it's a bit tedious, things break, you have to fix something and start all over again. When you do, when you're upgrading a site and it doesn't, doesn't work, it doesn't complete, it's broken. You actually have to go restore and start again. So having and writing scripts is a really important thing. Uh, in this regard. So while your users are making new content and your scripts are running, um, have it so that you can be ready for when your, your scripts stop to quickly QA, take a look, make sure everything's there, do what you have to do, switch over to your site that you upgraded from your live production site, and at that point you'll have to migrate in the new content, uh, depending how much it is. Uh, you could do this manually or you could have uh, something like the migrate module, node export, or uh, some other sort of service uh, to move them across. Uh, common things that break are file paths. Uh, how do you track them down when they're in your content? Uh, link checker and a couple of uh, interns would be really handy. Um, and again, I want to reiterate the, reiterate the process is it's a picky and finicky process. There are a number of modules that uh, during the process will break, uh, will cause issues, will halt the whole thing. You got to stop, make the fix, adjust the order of operations sometime, and restart. So uh, I'm going to hopefully be able to prove this later. <laughs> okay. 
So one important thing also, um, especially if you're, a, if, if you're a company that uh, offers the service of upgrading the site or if you're thinking about it for your organization and want to know um, what it all will entail is really to be aware and, and count the cost of, of what will come ahead of you. There might be still a couple of deal breakers out there. Um, Shay mentioned the, the organic groups module. There has been a lot of great work done for that also in, in Drupal 7, but if you're Drupal 6 site is using any of the even so exotic modules that are, have been created for organic groups in 6, uh, you might be out of luck at the moment uh, in Drupal 7 because there were, have been such major changes to, to organic groups. Um, if you have an extremely hacked core, uh, I have my personal opinion about people who hack core, um, but uh, you might be a little bit out of luck or there might be actually a lot of work ahead of you in order to, to, make, this, uh, to make this upgrade uh, working. And also, if your site is, is quite outdated, you're running still on views one beta or something like that, you really should consider just to maybe to build it new than to try to uh, run the upgrade path. Um, so a number of things to take into consideration um, that Shay um, and I already mentioned about, and just to, to recap that, um, you have to take into consideration the number of the contributed modules that you use in your site and what the status is of, the, of, of those modules. So you have to do your research there. Um, is there an upgrade path? If there is, if that module doesn't exist in D7, um, how, can I get the, how can I keep that functionality? What needs to be done there? Um, the number of custom modules, uh, we showed you what can help you, but that was like, those were like two relatively simple modules. If we're talking about like 10 custom modules with like thousands of lines of code, you can, kind of imagine how long it will take also then with QA and, and testing until you have that up. And then uh, kind of like the number of themes that you're using on your site and uh, the views uh, TPL hell um, that it was really easy to get into in, in Drupal 6. Uh, remember these template files need to be adjusted so um, you have to count them and kind of like think about like okay man, how many files do I actually need to adjust, how many files do I have to work on? Uh, and also the server and, and hosting requirements. Uh, Drupal 6 uh, was a little bit more lightweight than Drupal 7, so it needs a little bit more um, power behind it. So that's also definitely something that you need to, that you need to check in order to see um, uh, if you need to make any changes if you switch over to a Drupal 7 environment. So to recap, is Drupal 7 the way to go? Yeah. It sure is. It's, uh, it's, on a, it's on the top of its life cycle. It's a great product. Um, the features that, that are in there, you, you want to have them, and, and they're really great, and uh, it's, it's the best way to, to move forward, especially when it comes also to, to mobile development. Um, is upgrading an easy thing? Not necessarily, but it's not as bad, especially if you use the tools that are out there. Um, if you, uh, for example, all the, your, your contributed modules, um, check the, there's usually like a, a ticket in the, in the issue queue that says like D, D7 port, and that's a great place to start and looking at like what happened to a, a number of people that had maybe issues in the past with upgrading uh, their module. Um, you have to take your costs into consideration and do a proper site audit. Um, of your site uh, in order to, to really see what you have and, and how much it will, will cost you. Uh, but um, in the end, everything is going to be all right. It's, it's, it's not, as, not as bad as it looks uh, and it's uh, not as expensive as it looks. It really can be done. So um, I saw a couple of wins last time I checked. Um, and um, Shay is going to start the, um, the demo and but once he started the demo, there's a, it's going to take a couple of minutes. So um, you can either then starting already to line up if you have any questions to us, or we're we going to try to answer some of the questions that uh, uh, came in through the, through the Twitter back channel. I was getting a little nervous at first. Uh, the fail column was uh, quite heavily out in front in the start, but uh, I think we caught up in, in the wind and near the end. Uh, and to answer the question, yes, the slides will be posted. Uh, there will be a link at the end of this, so we'll show you where to get those. Oop. Ooh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. All right. Come on over. Four. That's four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, what I've done, um, I'm going to show you a website. 
what I've done is I've created uh, a Drupal 6 sub website um, from a lot of very common, uh, very common modules. Uh, ooh, this is big. I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Can you guys see that? Probably okay. Um, what I've done is I've created a not a simple site, um, but a site here that uh, I'll log out quite quickly just so you can see the rest of the map. Um, I've created a site using a lot of very common uh, Drupal contributed modules. So uh, there's a new system, a calendar system, there's a, a blog, there's forums, there's actually a, an e-commerce store, a very simple one that just lists products really, that's all it does. Um, there's a quick tabs here on the right hand side, there's recent news, there's uh, poll, there's uh, integration with social media, uh, navigation, um, so there's quite a bit of things going on in this. So this is, although small, it's got only got roughly about 1,500 nodes in it. Um, although small, it's not simple in the fact is that it's uh, you know, a page and a navigation menu. So there's a few things here. Uh, so what, what I'm trying to hope to do is go from this site, uh, which is actually using a, uh, a contributed Drupal theme. So there's a, there was an upgrade path in there. So those of that you were wondering, and what it would take. Uh, this one actually had an upgrade path, quite nice, uh, to get to the new one. Shrink this, which is a nice new shiny theme, uh, to have something that looks kind of sort of like this. So you have your, your content comes through, your navigation comes through, calendar, blog, forums. Um, so that's what we're going to try to do today. And for proof of concept, I'm going to show you guys. Here it is, up that hop. This is the Drupal 7 or Drupal 6 site. I'm going to run the script, and it's going to go through the process that we did today. So nothing like uh, code, live code, to make people run away. Um, and while this is runs, this is going to take. Uh oh, uh, anyway, uh, when this starts, um, this is going to take about five minutes to, to complete. So again, we'll get to the rest of you guys. Uh, please take up to the mic, and we'll start answering questions. Uh, but what this script is doing uh, is it takes. Uh, I've upgraded all the 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 contrib modules uh, to the latest uh, development versions. Um, so that already has been prepared. Uh, but this script will then take, um, take all those development modules, or sorry, contributed modules, uh, disable them, uh, run upgrade on core, uh, re-enable uh, the uh, contributed modules uh, with the D7 versions, uh, and then run the update on those as well. Sounds simple. Uh, there's probably a couple hundred lines uh, of code in this. Uh, this is super exciting. I know it's not, it hasn't done a whole lot right yet, but uh, it'll start spinning. There we go. Um, within this script as well, there's a number of, uh, of DB fixes that I had to do uh, with some contributed modules actually um, causing errors in the database. So there's a number of little tweaks to get this to, to work. Um, so uh, I'll probably provide this code. It's not pretty at the moment. Uh, I'll have to actually upgrade it um, and actually leave some comments uh, that's actually reusable somewhat. Um, but what this is doing, this is using Drush and a few scripts to actually automate the process of upgrading from a D6 version to a D7 version. So uh, right now it's actually doing all the uh, contributed module updates. I know these are core updates, but um, so again, so please uh, take the mic and uh, we'll have some uh, Q&A session here. And um, just to follow up with what uh, Shay has said, um, once he has commented properly the <laughs> code in this script and uh, it's run through the coder module for proper syntax. Oh, really? <laughs> um, we will make that, we will make that uh, um, code available to you. Um, we're going to post probably a link on the, on the session page uh, if you have any, but if you also are interested in it, uh, feel free to just uh, shoot Shay or me an, an email uh, in our, um, through the presenter site on the DrupalCon. Um, yeah, and we'll be available profile. for a while after the presentation yeah. as well, so feel free to come and say it. First question. Hi guys, I'm Senpai. Um, just last week, there was a, a new Drush alias committed to Drush 5 that in one step will disable all enabled contrib modules. Uh, it loops through the site looking for anything that's not core and not theme and disables it um, in a single command. And if you're savvy, you can also get that to export to a text file so that you can use the same command in reverse to re-enable everything. So you might want to look for that, it's kind of cool. Oh. Uh, and Thanks, question, question on the contribs. Um, because Drupal 7 runs the install files of all the modules that are in the site, regardless of whether they're disabled or not, how are you guys handling that? And is it, do you find that it's still necessary to disable contribs, or does it matter? Uh, from upgrading from Drupal 6 to 7, absolutely. Um, disable your, your, your contrib modules prior to operating core. Um, what I actually did with this script is I 
uh, because of the way that uh, this works, it will actually try to upgrade not only the core, uh, but all the contrib modules at once. Um, I have this in a git branch um, that actually checks out from a D6 branch to a D7 branch uh, without any contributed modules in it. Uh, so then it runs core very cleanly without any interference from uh, any of the contributed modules. Um, completes that and then checks out a new branch which has all the contributed modules in it and then runs the up, uh, enables and runs all the updates on the, on the D7 versions of those. That's kind of how that works. So I think it's very, uh, I do what you're saying, I think it's important to, to disable them uh, prior to upgrade. So what, just a, a quick question for, for the, uh, the drush command. Uh, which one was that? I'm gonna get you back here. Uh, it's, it's actually commented out in one of the uh, RC files, I think. It's not in core drush, but they put it in there as a reference. It's called dist-all, and you can find the, the, the drupal.org node at, uh, I think it's 130-4400. So <laughs> look it up. Oh, that's uh, precise. Well, yeah. <laughs> Give or take one or two, right? Yeah. Great, so thank you. Do you have any experience with uh, upgrading uh, internationalization or the domain modules, and can you talk about that? I'm going to be extremely honest there with you, no. I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you. Uh, the answer would be no for that, sorry. Uh, you mentioned uh, going all the way to dev versions of all your contributed modules rather than a stable release. Was, that's, that seems crazy, but yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the reason why is a lot of the, the development versions have the bug fixes, um, and, and they're, they were pushed out for the, the, uh, the upgrade to Drupal 7. Um, there are quite a few actual Drupal 7 modules that we run development versions of, um, just because uh, things like even like C tools and views, um, those have the latest bug fixes, and those are actually are the latest and stablest uh, modules out there. So um, it is a bit scary saying running the dev versions of things, um, and it is a uh, it's not for every module. Uh, sometimes it is best that you run the stable version in, in Drupal 7. But when you're going to upgrade from 6 to 7. Uh, Majority of the time, uh, you want to upgrade to the development version because it has all the, the latest code um, and then any upgrade process or patches that were needed to be applied to that. That's for both in 6 and 7. Uh, well, 6 will definitely, development yeah. version 7, um, you can upgrade to stable branches. Uh, sorry for two questions, but the other one is, is this a good moment to switch to a different theme or should that sort of be a separate project? Is this a good moment for that? Uh, by switch to different theme, do you mean uh, another contributor? I mean, uh, going from, specifically for me, Zen to Omega. Oh, um, well, I have a bit of a bias yeah, against I, Zen, I, I, so I have to take my two cents on that one. I'm sure there'll be a few guys <laughs> arguing, in this, or arguing with me in this uh, crowd, but um, absolutely, I think this is a wonderful time to really uh, take the time to move from uh, your old theme into a new, modern, responsive layout. Um, again, like Dries pointed out, mobile is very big um, and is something you should consider. Uh, so yes, this is the time to go. So I'm going to pause you for one second here. I'm just going to quickly show you this is completed. Um, so hopefully we have a new site. And I get nervous about this line right here where it says block administration was assigned to an invalid region. Uh, that tends to happen, so the layout might look a little bit different. Um, but when we get back, we'll find out. Come on. One, two, three, go. Okay. That doesn't count as a fail. That's a Mac OS problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the moment of truth. Uh, hopefully, we have a final tally on the uh, oh, win loss I column. I stopped counting. You still lost, guys. <laughs> okay, so this is the Drupal 6 site. Uh, hopefully, it looks like something like a little bit like the Drupal 7 site uh, when I hit this refresh button. So, fingers crossed for me, people. Hey, it worked! <laughs> So it's there. Uh, as much as that was done during a live demonstration, that took a while. Um, and again, it's, it took a few minutes to, to run as well. So um, a quick point is, uh, we'll get to the questions um, in a sec. Uh, not everything does get across 100% uh, uh, with this. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the blog is missing some images uh, and some social media uh, links. Uh, those fields, uh, a lot of times, are contributed fields and actually have to come in and upgrade them using the CCK migrate uh, field upgrade tool that comes out with core. While Shay is getting to, to that uh, tool, I'm just going to quickly answer a question that was posted here on, on Twitter. Um, you said there are two ways, upgrade versus fresh install. Which do you prefer or had to take most of the time you works and why? Um, 
it really depends on, on the project that you're working with. This is, if the site is relatively straightforward, um, it can save you a lot of time to have all that content moved over and the content types moved over and you don't have to recreate any of this. Um, but the moment you get into a more complex um, projects, especially if there are new requirements that kind of like came in, in as part of that project, uh, that's when it then becomes something where we are kind of like saying, okay, you know what, uh, this might actually be a good case where it would make more sense uh, to start with a, with a clean slate uh, and uh, just migrate the content over. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to quickly go through this page and we'll get to the, the questions again. Uh, what this, the, this page is, it's under the structure and then migrate fields. I'm using the admin menu module for those that uh, are wondering what that is. Um, this will show you some of the fields that didn't actually make it through during core update um, and the reason why. So we have uh, a date field, uh, the five star rating field, and an image thumbnail field that didn't make it across. Um, and also, also uh, a field listed at the bottom here saying it's missing a reference. So this is one of the trouble modules, uh, the node reference field. Uh, there's multiple um, new entity reference fields uh, that you'll have to either migrate to uh, um, or provide a kind of a, a transition to. Um, but with this one, uh, we have these new Drupal 7 uh, contrib modules. We have date, uh, a new five star, and field thumb. You come in here, you check in off on the fields, and you run the migrate selected fields button. And what this will do is actually migrate your old fields up to the new Drupal 7 entities. Um, so that will then allow the site to show the five star ratings and the images again. So uh, I'll show you that in a sec. So if we carry on with the questions. Uh, yes, you mentioned sites using, uh, Drupal 6 sites using Cooper Cart might not be ready for upgrade. Could you elaborate on that? Um, I'll be honest, I'm not an e-commerce expert. Uh, we have another uh, individual on um, within our, in our office that takes care of that. Uh, but as far as e-commerce goes, and, and from what I understand, is that uh, Ubercart is, uh, it hasn't progressed as far as the commerce module, and that is the focus in Drupal 7. Um, there's gonna be a lot more development happening for the commerce module. Um, like I mentioned that the commerce guys uh, acquired a whole bunch of funding uh, to develop and, and to build out that one. Uh, so that will most likely be the dominant um, uh, e-commerce uh, tool uh, for Drupal 7. So that's a, that's a consideration you should have. What tips or recommendations would you um, uh, recommend for dealing with a lot of used template files in an upgrade, and at what point would you maybe not pr pursue the upgrade path? Uh, is there a certain number or complexity? Um, I, I wouldn't say there's any magical number. Um, a lot of those views template fields too, you might just even have a syntax change uh, with, uh, with the, the actual wrapper uh, element. Uh, that can be accomplished a lot of times through things like semantic views, uh, and the new uh, view seven actually allow you to pick and choose wrapper and labels. Um, that, again, is this, it's a bit of a give and take. You'd have to take a look and see what was actually done in those views template files as well. Um, a lot of times there's actually be custom logic and functionality in that, which would create even more of a nightmare. Um, so uh, there's, it's really hard to say uh, kind of if there's a magic number for that, so um, again, uh, if there's if there is logic and there is a whole bunch a whole bunch of files and they all have logic, definitely something to, to look into, uh, even creating fresh uh, new template files. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't really give you a magic number on that one. I mean, in going forward, properly, you definitely want to look at those template files that have been just created in order to make that field be in a span tag instead of like a div tag or something like that. Mm -hmm and uh, audit it in this way and try to get rid of these template files that don't have any additional uh, logic in because it has become now in the latest views version in Drupal 7 so easy to, to do that right through the UI. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the uh, demo, uh, pretty impressive. Uh, I think you addressed this question like about five minutes ago while, while we were waiting. But let me, maybe you can detail a little bit more. You said that in some cases, when the site is a bit complicated, a bit complex, as you say, then it's best to try a migrate strategy that into upgrade. And, and you actually, my question was about no reference, and you addressed that in the sense that now there is the entities reference module, and with multi values, when you have a no reference, that is multi values. And um, could you detail a little bit how you go about that? Do you run first an upgrade and then you take care of things that? Those, those connections that were not proper, properly migrated, or how, how would you go about that? Um, 
in a case like this, again, Drush can probably be a big uh, friend for you because the, the, the thing is you're not losing anything in the database. The information and the references are all there. So if you have something where you really there is, where you don't know exactly, there is no upgrade path, there is nothing documented because it's a very specific case or so, um, through Drush you can run your own PHP scripts uh, with the whole with the whole bootstrap, so you have everything to you, and it, it's basically just as if you would write your own module. So um, going back to what I mentioned in the beginning, the upgrade for Portland State University from uh, Drupal 6 to Drupal 7, uh, there were a number of things that we needed to to adjust in this way. So uh, what we had was like a about 10 times larger uh, amount of and lines of code and scripts that what Shay was using for that demo today. Uh, in order to upgrade these uh, these multi sites and then also run specific upgrades where there was just there was no way to go from like what they had in the old system and how it was supposed to work in the new system where you just had to go in and say like okay um, this new module is saving the data information in this way so what I need to do is I get the information from the from the old tables and I'm plugging them in, into the new tables. And regarding no reference, I think the jury is a little bit out there because there are two modules that are competing in this realm. The one is entity reference and the other one is uh, just called references, I think. Um, so that's a little bit, it's hard to say which one to go there at the moment. Yeah, there's a third one out there, I can't remember what it's called, um, that it does take care of that, uh, that gap between uh, six and seven. Um, it's kind of a patch module that uh, is out there. I can't remember the name, but it does, uh, for this particular one, it, uh, it allows you to upgrade into it. Uh, and then from there, you might be able to easily, um, I use that kind of word fun, uh, but may be able to manipulate uh, those references uh, from there to the new uh, entity reference field, for example, uh, a little easier than it would be directly coming from six. Uh, I have two questions, actually. The first one is, you mentioned about IMCE and media module. Is there a, uh, what was the technical reason for switching to media in Drupal 7 versus uh, just staying with IMCE? You can say with IMCE, there's no problem with that at all. And actually, a lot of guys still use that. Um, as far as the, the new functionality in 7, uh, media module is pretty cool. Um, it's really, it's, it's easy to manage. It allows you to organize folders um, and create thumbnails, and it integrates with WYSIWYG. Um, so it, it really is the, the new leader in what's going to go forward in file management. Um, so IMC still works, but again, you're working on file directory, it's a file browser. Um, Media module has, uh, it actually creates file entities uh, and, and manages on top of that. So there's a lot more power uh, with using the Media module, uh, and you can import your existing file structures into it. So it's, uh, you don't have to, it, it's a, it is a preference choice, but um, I quite recommend using it, and I use it for all, all the sites I, I build going forward. The other question is, is I'm from a large educational institution, and it's interesting to hear that you did Portland State University. Uh, is there any specific advice you'd give? Because quite a few people at our university have uh, taken the uh, migrate or rebuild from scratch. Uh, what's, was there anything being in the university situation that you could think of you would add as good advice? Well, specific in this case, why we chose the, the upgrade road was because um, how they had their content types structured beforehand was really simple, relatively simple. They didn't use Drupal 6 to, their, to its full potential. So the upgrade was just an, an easier step, uh, especially when you were thinking about like 180, like when we started the project, it was only 160 side. By the time we came to the point where we're saying, well, now we have to run the scripts, it was like 180, up to 180, 185 sides. Um, so it, it, it really, Again, it, it really depends on um, do you want to introduce new functionality there? Um, is it just about getting it from one platform and the other, but it should just do basically the, the same thing? I think that's, this is a, um, you have to look at this on, on a case, case by case. Uh, there is no general rule, I would say, where you can say um, this, is the, this is the border. Like if, if your site falls under these cr criteria, um, you do upgrade if it if it goes beyond that. Uh, you should migrate. I think this board is like uh, it's, that's a, it's a large gray zone um, where you have to really 
do the, the content audit uh, and also the site audit about the, the features and functionality. Um, and definitely if you want to go a step further, if you want to go and say like, we want to use this opportunity to introduce new features and to introduce a new theme and uh, uh, these kind of things, uh, then it's definitely something where, where migrating it uh, might be actually the better option. Where the, the, the time that you would spend on figuring out how to upgrade it, um, you could use that time against building something new, if, I, if that somehow makes sense. So I have two questions as well. Uh, the first is, how many people did you have on your migration project, and how long did it take? <laughs> yeah. This is it. This is the two of us here. Um, I, I, I get the stare from the Portland State people there in the back row. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so how long did the like the actual technical migration and uh, Elliot just just nod or, or, or shake your head? Yeah. Um, I think like the the actual part on on the on the code base to run all of these scripts. We had them done like in four days a week. Was that about about right? Yeah. Um, and then after that, there still was it still was necessary to actually go in and and check some of the entered content uh, manually. And uh, for that, we had uh, we had a couple of more people. I don't know how big the team was uh, that we additionally yeah, got. Uh, to, to go through these uh, three sites and uh, check a couple of, of manual yeah. things regarding uh, tables that, for example, were in the, in the body field and how they look and, and these kind of things that, that are really hard to, uh, to automate. Um, yeah, one more question. We can do one more question, and I think then we're basically Sorry, uh, was that four days to run the scripts or four days to build the scripts? Oh, no, building the scripts took longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how, yeah, how long did that process take? It's hard to say because uh, there was a lot of uh, there was a couple of features there that actually changed on us. So not only did we write it once, but we had to write it a, a couple of times. Uh, one example was that media module. They they changed their underlying uh, methodology of how they're actually going to handle files. Uh, so we had a, an upgrade path for, for that or a migration path for that. Um, and then they decided that no, we're not going to do this anymore. And completely changed it. Um, so that was a that was a big headache um, on our side of things uh, to move it over. So. There was quite a few, uh, quite a few late nights. Um, I'd have, I'd be hard pressed to put a number on it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, this one here, uh, I put in probably about 22 hours, I think, with setting up the sites and getting all configured and, and working out patches and things like that. So, um, it, and that's not including this morning. Okay. Um, thanks, everyone, and also thanks for like all your messages uh, on on the back channel there. Yeah.